Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and I want to give you a little bit of an update on what's been going on over the last couple of days when it comes to some of the stuff with Digibyte. So, one of the things that I noticed was that the Digifacts that we have at uh, GitHub, we've, uh, we've gone and uploaded them and everything, all those pretty little pictures that you see um, that are shared oftentimes around social media, they're not actually very helpful. So this this is what happens. So if you go here to, to GitHub, this is basically what it looks like. And you can click on images. And it's not really that helpful. Like, what do they all actually look like? You can't see that. So I thought what we actually need is we need a website. And I said that here. I said I've sorted it out. So these are all of the pictures that me, uh, along with, I had help from a, a, a couple of other people in terms of creating these Digifacts. Uh, probably originally back about a year ago now. I think we first did them. We now actually have a website where you can go and click on them and see them and, and we'll basically start at the top and work our way down. Now I did ask for some help uh, from people to spice it up and make it look a little bit better because I'll be honest this was just a very very crude let's get something up and I've already had some people respond which is fantastic so for that I'm incredibly grateful and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with because Anything at the moment has to be better than, than these literally just in, in a number, right? Um, but at the same time, uh, sorry, in a list. But at the same time, I think it's actually super important for these to be able to be scrolled through like this because you come down and you basically, you see some of these. So Digifact number seven, the fees for Digibyte are incredibly low. And in box 7,658,349, a user sent 6 million worth of Digibyte from the inputs of over two hundred different addresses and it costs them less than 0.1 of a cent in fees and it only took a couple of seconds to confirm that's the really cool part about it now the difference is, is if we go back so that's digi fact number seven if you're having a look here if you didn't know like what what does fact seven look like there so that's kind of why i, I felt it was really important that we had this website and somewhere that people can go so i've gone and put this here digifax.digibyte servers that's one of the domains that i use for all of the servers and things dot io digifax.digibyte servers dot io super cool really stoked can't wait to see what these uh, other members of the community are going to come up with in terms of the way that they can uh improve upon it really looking forward to that and they're even looking at translations so Fingers crossed that could be really cool for the future. Uh, one of the things as well is I've had a lot of people say, well, what's what's happening with 8.21? What does it look like? Because everything you've done is a screenshot of the, basically the command line, effectively. And, and what does it look like? I want to see a screenshot. Show me a photo. So this is it. You can see the photos here. Um, and now before Nigel asks, because he's also, he's really good at picking this up when it's been left off. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. It's got a lowercase uh, b there. <laughs> we'll fix that up. It's This is an early build. Like I mentioned, there are still things that we're going to need to fix up. And, and there is already um, issues that we've encountered, specifically in the way that the blocks are being relayed to certain nodes. So that's, that's our current issue. Um, but it's shaping up really quickly, which is super cool. So again, a big shout out to Barry. Thank you so much for all of the hard work that you've been putting in. Uh, and we've got some input from Yoshi as well. He's done some memory optimizations and some uh, some input as well from Matthew, uh, MC Trivia. Looking forward to talking more about that soon. But so this is this is basically, I mean, the loading screen now. You have the full gorgeous Digibyte logo there, uh, and then this is the actual the node itself. To be honest. It's nothing super exciting. Uh, that was one of the things that we noticed though, is that we needed to remove the themes. The problem that we were having was the themes were not playing nice with the update, uh, where previously it's been blue and black and, and Digibyte white, the three different colorings. Uh, because so much has changed and there've been all these new features added since version 0.17 in Bitcoin, we're now further, we're four versions ahead, we're basically jumping up. And so as a result, um, the themes uh, which cause problems even to begin with that not a lot of people use we're having problems with those themes bringing them forward so that's not to say that they're gone forever they may well be bought in uh, in due course but for the time being we've basically just gone you know what they're causing problems we'll just skip them we'll just ignore them for now and we can just stick with the vanilla looking digibyte core I mean it's still it's digibyte it's Let's be honest, it's nowhere near as pretty as the UI version that we had. Look, I tell you what, why don't I quickly, let me bring this up. And let's see if I can find it. Digi by Pipeline. 
let me quickly bring this up here. So here's the, the pipeline. So if we go into the items, uh, I didn't put the, <laughs> where's the UI? Update core wallet UI. And I'm pretty sure here was the design that uh, Demir did back in the day, which is pretty cool. Actually, let's open this in a new tab. Just to give you a bit of an example, this was what he envisaged the future of the Digibyte core wallet looking like. Now, this is something that is purely a... What's the best way? A, a, a proof of concept. I'll tell you what, why don't I quickly... Can I hide the camera here? This is purely a proof of concept. But it is actually a really, really cool proof of concept. This is what he thought the future of the Digibyte wallet could look like. Um, and it is slick as hell. Super slick. Super duper slick. Um, I mean, just look at it. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. He's got the full color palettes. We've got a light mode as well. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic work there. Um, send, him, send him some Digibyte for the time he, he spent on that, because that's really cool from Demir. Um, but anyway, so if you do want to... Uh, let me switch back here. If you are interested in following along, what you can do is you can go to digi uh, github.com forward slash digibyte dash core forward slash digibyte. Change the branch. You want to come down here. These have all recently been renamed. A bunch of them are archived. They're older versions and things. This is specifically what we are working on now. Feature slash 8.21.1. Click on that and you'll see all of the latest updates. We can see the last commit was 22 hours ago. I started on some of the Apple Silicon stuff. Um, so you can see behind me, this is not quite... We haven't got it working on it yet, but I'm cautiously optimistic we will. There are some improvements that have come from Random X, which will specifically suit the Apple Silicon, which is where it's being held up at the moment. Um, cautiously optimistic, and I think what we're going to see is a lot more heading towards these ARM-based CPUs in the future. That that laptop is 10 watts for the CPU. That is incredible, given the amount of processing performance that it puts out. 14 watts is is basically unmatched and I'm not an Apple fan I absolutely can't stand OS X for the life of me hate it absolutely freaking hate it love Linux though um, and would love to see Linux on there eventually but yeah so that's that's kind of why we're putting a little bit of extra effort in there because what we're seeing is already Microsoft putting uh, the hard yards in there as well when it comes to Windows and things so kind of feels like we're going to be heading towards an ARM-based future in a number of ways, or at least where we've got x86, 64-bit, and ARM as well on the on the side. So it makes sense for us to put a little bit of effort in there. Uh, so I did mention in the last video I was hoping that we would have it done. We definitely don't. But you can come here. You can click on the commit history. You can see what's been going on as well, and you can actually scroll through and, and have a bit of a nosy if you're just kind of curious. We can see here he's been doing some work with Dandelion, which I'm really looking forward to, because I think it's going to be a nifty little feature. I won't go into it too much today, but I'll, I'll talk about it in the future. Um, it looks like it's going to be a nifty little, uh, sorry, a nifty little feature for showing what's going on with Dandelion. So hopefully I'll, I'll be talking to you a little bit more about that in the future. Anyway, that's uh, going to be all for me for today. I've probably rambled on enough as it is. Um, thank you so much for, for tuning in. If you do have any comments, any questions at all you'd like answered, hit me up in the comments section down below. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at DGB underscore chilling. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the next video, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. But to be honest, it'll probably be the day after, which is Tuesday for me, because Mondays get busy. But we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Cheers.